Hello and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the practical and the math skill of dilution series or serial dilutions. If you are just interested in either the practical or the math skills then I'll put time codes at the bottom and you can just skip to what's relevant for you. So where this actually comes up with the practicals is in two of the required practicals. Required practical three is linked to using a dilution series to create different concentrations of a solution to investigate the water potential of plant tissues. And required practical 11 is creating dilution series of different glucose um, concentration solutions to then using a colorimeter. So first of all, what do we actually mean by dilution series or serial dilution? And this is when you are doing step-by-step -step dilutions to create a range of different concentrations. So if we have a look at this example, this test tube is what we call in the stock solution. That is your original concentration in your original solution. And for this example, I'm just saying that is 100%. What you then do is step-by-step -step dilute to create a range of concentrations. So first of all, I'm going to take one part of the stock solution and mix that with nine parts water. And then doing that one to nine ratio, we've now diluted it tenfold. So we've gone from 100% to now a 10% concentration. And we continue to do this step by step. So if we repeat that process, we'll then end up with a 1% concentration, repeat it again, we'll then have 0.1% concentration. And in between each time, you do have to mix it thoroughly. Now, the reason that this is an advantage is it enables you to make solutions with very low concentrations, such as this 0.1% concentration, but you don't have to measure out very small volumes. Each time you're only measuring um, one part could be one centimetre cubed. So it could just be one centimetre cubed and nine centimetres cubed. And you can do that accurately than if you were trying to measure out very precise or very small volumes, for example, 0.99 centimetres cubed to make one of these very small concentrations. So that's why it's an advantage. It improves your accuracy. So I've got an example practical question here. So we've got the student needed to estimate the number of bacterial cells present in a solution by counting them under the microscope. They needed to use a dilution series to investigate the number of cells present, otherwise there'd be too many bacteria to accurately count. So the actual question is describe a method for how they could make a one in 10 dilution and then use that solution to make a one in a thousand um, from that original solution. So this is now going to show you how you would use the information from the slide before to fit this exam question. So the first mark would be add one part bacteria culture to nine parts water. And that is what I was showing you on the previous slide. So you'd add one part to nine water and that would make your one in um, 10 dilution or 10 to the minus one. There's always a mark for saying mix at this stage because you have to make sure that the one part bacterial culture and water are thoroughly mixed. So you do have an even distribution and you have equal concentration throughout that test tube. Then it's just repeating this twice over. So you would then take one part of the 10 in one and mix that with nine of water, mix it up. You would then take one part of that 10 in 2, or 10 to the minus 2, um, with 9 parts water, mix it up, and that is how you get your 10 to the minus 3, or in other words, 1 in 1,000. So that is typically a three-mark question, and those are the key marking points. So that's how this links to the practical skill. You can also be assessed, though, mathematically with dilution series. And there's two key, very basic formula that you can use to really, really help you with these questions. So first of all, C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. Now C1 is the concentration that you start with, so that is often called the stock solution. 
V1 is the volume of the stock solution that you're transferring over. C2 is the concentration of the solution you're making. V2 is the volume of the new solution. Now the second formula down here is showing you what V2, so the final volume, uh, what that is actually consisting of. So it's V1, so it's the volume of the stock solution you're transferring over, plus the water, the volume of water that you're going to be diluting it with. And you will often need both of these formula to complete an exam question. And I think that's often why students find these questions hard, because they just use that top formula. So here's an example of how you could apply the formula to one of these maths questions. And quite typically, you'll see that you'll be given a table and you will then be asked to populate the missing sections. So in this question, the table below shows how to make a sucrose solution with a concentration of 0.08 moles per decimeter cubed. So you have to complete the table, filling in the missing heading, which will go here, the units, which will be here, and then these two volumes at the bottom. So first of all, let's put this here as our reminder, those two formula to use. And the first thing you should do on these questions is highlight all of the numerical values you've been given and look carefully because often you'll have some of the numerical values that you need to use actually within the table, even within the header here. And this is a very similar question that came up to one um, in 2018 or 2019 and lots of students didn't get this mark because they missed the value in the table. Now, once you've highlighted all the values, then you need to apply your knowledge from the um, formula to work out which values you've been given. So we have C2. So this is the concentration that we need to make. So that's C2. We're told this is the volume that needs to be made. So that's V2. And this is actually C1. So volume of the one molar per decimeter cubed sucrose solution. So we need to work out the volume that we need to use, but you're told that that is the original solution. So we need to work out V1 for that box. So first thing I've done is rearrange the formula. Then I've slotted in our C2 and V2 and C1, and that has now given us 1.6 centimeters cubed. Now we needed to fill in this section here. What is the missing heading? And this is where the second formula comes in. So we've already worked out all of the values from the first formula, but what we haven't worked out yet was the volume of distilled water that we have to dilute V1 in. So that's what was missing in this table, the volume of distilled water to dilute with. And because it's a volume, we're gonna match the same units that they used here, centimeters cubed, and use those. Now it's time to use the second formula to work out what is the volume of distilled water that we need to use. So I've rearranged the formula because this one here is V2 as the subject, um, but we want distilled water to be the subject of the formula to work out the volume we need. So V2 minus V1, 18.4 centimetres cubed. Now you don't actually have to put the units within the body here if they're in the header so just bear that in mind so that is it for serial dilutions the practical side of it and the math side i hope you found it helpful if you have please give this video a thumbs up